The first image of Sagittarius A star in the center of the Milky Way is a major breakthrough for the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration. Imagine this, we combined the world's greatest radio telescopes into one Earth-sized antenna. To do this took many people and many efforts in many different ways, from thinking up the experiments, to planning, to taking the data, processing them, and to all the way extracting the images from the data. A lot of the people at the MPIFR here in Bonn made contributions. My name is Alan Roy. My name is Eduardo Ross. I am Anton Zensus. My name is John Huishen. I am Silke Pritzen. My name is Maciek Wielgus. The most important thing is to um, understand the, uh, the whole phenomenon of black holes because they started as a uh, quasi philosophical concept when people realized that the speed of light is uh, finite and therefore there could be some bodies which so heavy that nothing could escape and that exists is a philosophical concept for almost 200 years and only with these instruments like EHT and other similar facilities, modern facilities, it enters the realm of measurements, realm where you can actually probe it. I think black holes are the most fascinating phenomena in our universe and um, black holes could be so informative, they could tell us a lot about general relativity, but unfortunately these black holes are not eager to tell us about their physical nature. Taking an image of Sagittarius A star, even after the image of M87, is so interesting because such a star is the supermassive black hole closest to us, so we have a very detailed knowledge of its surroundings. In 2020, Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Gees received the Nobel Prize for determining the mass and the distance of this black hole and providing some of the best evidence for the existence of a black hole. So in principle we knew now where to look at with the EHT. To finally see an image of Sagittarius A star convolving was extremely exciting. I say convolving because it is not enough to have only one image. Sagittarius A star is varying on a very short time scale. So when we use our technique of interferometry, we try to take a picture of the source over an observing night, which typically takes 12 hours, over which the Earth is rotating. So if the source is varying and, and moving over that period of 12 hours, it's very difficult to take a picture. And we had to develop new algorithms that can deal with this variability so that in the end we can take an image. And that's why it took longer and we did M87 first, which was easier because that source doesn't vary and we can take a simple static picture. After a very detailed calibration and uh, checking, triple checking, comparison between models, we then arrive at a set of final images for the source. Working in science and especially astronomy is extremely interesting and very exciting, especially when it comes to results as Sagittarius A star and black hole imaging. But it is also a lot of work and effort you have to put into this work to get anything reliable out of the world data. For me, the most challenging part of working in the EHT would have to be the thin air at the altitude, the logistics of getting material and equipment to the telescope when you need it. Yeah, we uh, operate APEX with partners, namely the European Southern Observatory and the Onsela Space Observatory. We send scientists, many students, postdocs, to the telescope to perform our share of the observations. It's always a great experience because APEX is located in the Atacama Desert in 5,100 meters altitude. Well, first we have the high sensitivity receivers. The EHT has a set of their own receivers. And then we have back ends that digitize the signal from the Max Planck Institute. We have also the DBBC3, which is used in the EHT at Apex and uh, Pico Veleta stations. These provide the digitized wideband signal, which is then recorded on Mark 6 recorders. You apply for data in April, they get observed in April next year, and you get your data maybe one year later. For that you need a lot of patience. My main scientific interest would have to be the tests of general relativity. So black holes, like described in general relativity, are very simple objects. They should just be determined by their mass and their spin, and maybe their charge, which, which you cannot measure. So if you know what the mass is, you know exactly how big it should be. It's given by the Schwarzschild radius. 
And now with the observations of the Event Horizon Telescope, we are really narrowing down just to a couple of Schwarzschild radii. So we can compare the size of the black hole that we image with those that we expect to be and we find them in excellent agreement. My main scientific interest in the EHT is to search for the pulsar around the galactic center. To combine the information that we had about the black hole beforehand with the new information obtained from the image. To see how black holes look alike. To understand if such exotic objects like black holes, if they really exist, we need uh, uh, very powerful instrumentation. That's what we get from the EHD. Being part of this historical result, I feel amazed that the result actually worked out in the end. Being among the first to look at a region that has never been explored before. Well, being very proud because it stands on the shoulders of the work of many people who started establishing millimeter VBI. To work together on these biggest questions you can think of is, yeah, adventurous. Uh, you're part of something bigger than yourself. It's, uh, it's inspiring and humbling. One can maybe summarize it with a German saying that says, an image says more than a thousand words. Being at the beginning of a great endeavor. Mission accomplished, yes, but not quite yet. In science, there are always new, exciting questions, deeper questions that arise when you find an answer. We are no exception. And in coming years, with new telescopes, with new technology, with new methods that we will develop, we can expect a lot of research to be done for years to come.